Briefing fam, before the video starts, some very exciting news. Tia, this is Tia, store manager. You guys must know her by now. We've been doing videos here for a year. We are coming to, where are we going? We are going to Reef Palooza next week in Orlando. We will see you there if you're there. If not, huh? Next week. Yeah, it's crazy. I think it's April, what, 21st, 22nd? Yeah, next week. I just wanted to get that out of the way before we start today's video. Really looking forward to coming down and hopefully meeting some of you in person. What is going on, Reefing fam? March here, Fragblocks TV. Today, we're gonna do a video. We're gonna do a video on some corals. We haven't done coral videos in a long time. I feel like we've been talking a lot about our fun new tanks that are coming out and skylights and all this fun stuff in the store. But today, we're really gonna talk about the most important part of the business of Fragbox here is the coral. And we got a new shipment in from Australia. I think this is the single largest shipment I brought in, at least in recent memory. So 22 boxes. If you don't know what that is, it's a lot. 22 large styrofoam containers of coral, 460 colonies, I think in total. So we're gonna walk through the beds and then talk to you about what came in. If you are new to the channel, welcome. What this is, is a store here in Toronto, in Ontario, in Canada. Lovely Canada that specializes in those things over there, saltwater aquariums. Okay, so where to start? Where to start, where to start? Where do we start? <laughs> this is Jay, everyone say hi Jay. 5,000 people just said hi Jay behind their computers. Okay, yeah, start with the best. One of the best. One of the best, yeah. There's so many nice people. I've never seen one like this, and this is called a acanthophilia. What is an acanthophilia? I think it's, it's like LPS for sure. And it's kind of like kind of like a cyanarina, kind of like a donut, kind of like a scoli, kind of like a fat acan. Kind of like all of that in one big plump specimen. Next to it over here is a cyanarina. Maybe I can post in the description. We've done a lot of videos on how to keep these corals, how to keep them happy, alive, growing, how to have success with them. We do a lot of coral spotlights. I know for sure I've done one on these. I think I've done one on these. I think. If I have one, I am going to post it below. This is another acantho. I'm just going to kind of walk through part by part. This is a very, very nice piece, but it doesn't look too happy, huh? The mouth? Yeah, that's not a good sign. You want to see the mouth? That's okay. That's ideal. So if you're looking to purchase one of these, don't buy one that looks like that. You want to see the mouth. Unless it's eating, or it's managed to catch like a piece of food particle randomly. You don't want to see skeleton like you see there on the side. You want to see them, I call them plump or fat. That's not really, the, I think, the correct term. Inflated, is that is that the right term? Inflated, yeah. So that's not really a good sign. It's a beautiful piece. I hope that it's going to be okay. These just came in. So we were unpacking this video. What time is it now? 12 hours ago. It hasn't even been a day, half a day. So we just give it more time and then uh, hopefully it will bounce back. This one looks good though looks really good and he's kind of got a blue like a little blue rim and he's all sparkly on the outsides got some more over here oh this is nice I'm gonna grab that little rock that's squishing him these are really cool I've never seen them like this even the mushroom it's just wow Scully's a little bit rough again crazy transit time all of these corals came from Australia from the Great Barrier Reef so a little little bit stressed I do expect most of them to bounce back. That's nice. Oh, look at that one hiding in there. Ooh, also very nice. Oh, he didn't look like that yesterday. No, no he looks really good. Some more blastos, blastos. Blastos, we have a lot of. Did I say blasto? It's short form for blastomusa. From Australia, we get two types. So this is the blastomusa welsi. I think it's W-E-L-S-S-I. So that's one type. And then we also get this other really cool one we don't see often. It's called blastomusa merletti. So also a blasto that it grows tons of little heads and they almost branch out. You can see here the skeleton underneath the polyp. They kind of like, they grow almost like, um, how can I describe it? Almost like a bouquet, but we don't get these ones as often. And they really only come in this color, the red green, and then sometimes I'll see one other purple green variety, but really unusual and massive rocks. Just for reference, look how big those are. If you're looking for something for a larger aquarium, a lot of this stuff does get fragged up just because it is quite expensive. So a piece like this will run, I don't know, maybe 200 and change, 250, two and a quarter. I haven't calculated the prices of all this stuff yet. Most people I find though are looking for smaller $20 francs and you know, try and keep them and grow them out. But the Blastos nonetheless look really, really good in this order. And we have some pipe organ, but they're not open yet. So what does that mean open? They're still kind of recovering from shipping. 
probably later today, maybe tomorrow. The lights are just coming on. Open brain. These are really nice. Very cool varieties. Lots of different shapes. Oh, that one's nice. Hello. And then if you want to see one that doesn't look the best, as you guys know on the channel, I show you the good and the bad. I don't know, do other people do that? I'm happy to show you the good and the bad. It's too easy to show you the good. I don't want to just be like, oh, look at this. Amazing, rainbow, eight cans all day. How about the shit? How about when stuff doesn't go as planned? Kind of like this right here. Not a good sign. I see some tissue recession dropping right in there. That's not good. The entire outer skeleton's showing. Not good. Actually, what percent would you say, Jay, if this thing has a surviving? Very low. Very low? Yeah. If you had to put a number on it? Like in the perfect care even, I'd say like 30%. She's saying perfect care, 30%. I would say lower, maybe. maybe even a little lower. Yeah. That's a torch. Just give me an 8 pen. Sorry, guys. I know this isn't part of the video. I okay. can find it at this Bernardopora. Oh, yeah. It's a Bernardopora. Hello. It's like an encrusting, not like, it's basically an encrusting Ganyopora. The 8 cans, Australia has the nicest 8 cans. That's it. There's no argument. There's no question. Look at these things. Just fantastic. One of my favorite corals of all time. And I think that's because I find them easy. I, I really have no trouble keeping them. And they can be grouped together. So what I often do is throw them into a little garden like I've done over here. Oh, and on this tank, I wanna talk about this in another video. I've switched over to this because Matt here in the store recommends it. And the customer feedback has been crazy. This is Tropic Marin's All For Reef Sun. So I'm slowly um, coming off the red sea dosing and switching to that. It's something we keep in stock now all the time. I'm not trying to sell you on it, or maybe I am, I'm not sure yet. I'm just trying it out. Um, you can probably find it at your local fish store, but really, really happy with the results so far. The corals are looking really good, and it's really easy because it's calcium, elk, magnesium, all in one supplement, and it goes against everything I previously thought about dosing. But anyways, this is why I like Akins. Oh, puffy, friendly, they get along. You group them right next to each other, and you can create these really beautiful gardens of the same type. Oh, there's a green one in there. I have maybe seven, eight varieties. So these ones are a little bit deflated here in this tank. The longer they stay here, actually they're not even that deflated. They look pretty good. But the longer they stay here, the more puffy they get. They almost jump right out of their skeleton. I would say if I had to pick one that's the nicest, I don't want the other ones to get upset because they're not as nice because they are, but this is just a spectacular piece. This one here, this one over here. And this one over here. These are all good candidates for fragging. I think they would be far too expensive to offer as a colony. Something like this is going to run upwards of six, I want to say six, seven hundred dollars if we were to offer it the way it is. So it usually gets cut down into smaller, more affordable pieces. We have some nice zoas, cool varieties. They're just starting to open up. And something about the Aussie zoas, they come really clean. So what does that mean? I don't find as many pests as like um, zoas from other parts, other oceans, other countries, other parts of the world. Australian ones, something about them really, really, really clean. We dip them really hard, but generally not much comes off of them. These are some long tentacle plate corals that want to be torch corals. They look like if I didn't tell you that wasn't a torch, you probably couldn't tell. These are all long tentacle plates and they're kind of funky. Oh, these are nice hiding under here. Let me see, actually, we we'll give them a little more breathing room. Let's check out these plate corals. Ooh, very cool yellow. I'm gonna move him. He's expensive, and you don't want him to get hurt. So Let's move these guys over. You two, you gonna go with your buddy. Corals are very nice. What else do we have? Some Micromusa, and it's getting swallowed by an elegance coral. Hello, that's not good. These tanks are completely full, so today's job is sort of fragging, going through them, and making sure that stuff isn't touching because not good, not good if they're touching like that, a little bit too close. These Micromusa didn't ship too good. It was a very long transit time. Slight delay, but the rest of it, like the hammers, the utilias, the torches, they look fantastic. Really good sign. These ones, these ones already open. Hasn't even been 12 hours. Very, very good sign. Ozzy has some of the nicest torches. I think I saw some true gold. Oh, there they are. These are gonna fly right away. Haven't had these in a while. That's a true Australian gold torch. Really cool pieces. I think we only got four or five. This is nice too, kind of hiding there. There's a lot going on in terms of euphilia. Lots, lots of hammers, lots of frog spawn, lots of torches. Very, very popular coral in the hobby in general. This one is pretty sweet in here. Lots of... Little sun eye. No, I don't think it is. No, is it? I think it's a lobo. 
How about these? Lobo? Lobo? Very Lobo? 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 Lobo, Lobo. You're actually right. Very aggressive. I think you're right. Could be. It's a nice piece. It's huge. The chalice looks really good. Some of the zoas still recovering. Haven't opened up yet. Some trumpet coral. Some of these little hammers hiding in here are just gems. Little, little gems of hammers. We have some cool singularia. I tried to order a lot of soft coral on this order. Order on this order. Um, for this tank here, because this is our like softy, sort of dominated tank. I love the Neptune sky, by the way, if you want to know my honest opinion. But trying to get lots of different varieties of soft coral in there. Okay, let's see what's going on over here. In this tank, we have some Duncan, lots of Duncan. I ordered a lot. We haven't been able to get corals in a while, so I did order a lot more than I normally would. This is the branching type, and they have the cool sort of green stem. Another personal favorite of mine. I think just because it's easy to keep. I like corals that are easy. The acro came in looking like garbage, but this is very typical of corals from Australia. I mean, at least for, um, for acro, they don't come in looking very good. They come almost not almost, very bleached, and then we almost have to bring them back. It takes three to four weeks for them to really show off their color. So they look kind of cool now, this light, iridescent, bleachy kind of color. This looks pretty good though, all things considered, for a strawberry shortcake. These are very nice. I haven't had healthy ones like this in a while. This looks really good for Ice Fire and Shinada. Not the easiest piece to keep, but there's truly nothing like it. Really, really special. Lots of softies in here. Some yellow Fiji leathers, which we don't see too often in the trade anymore and some other cool toadstools and varieties in there some cyphastria some more cyphastria oh i got lots of cyphastria oh, oh, sorry i didn't realize the water's on lots of cyphastria um this guy looks stunning and the clams the clams look really really good check this one out oh it's kind of hard with the t5s to see. Let's see if i can block the light out it's a really big uh i believe it's a squamosa a really really big specimen and super healthy uh, let me see if i can show you from the side it's kind of tricky with t5 lights oh there he is He's about eight inches across. Even the other ones, they look really good. Lots of Christmas tree worm rocks. Purples, reds, greens, lots of varieties in there. There's a lot here, a lot, a lot of corals. Um, what else can I show you? I think that's about it. Oh, the sun coral, check this out. Very yellow, like super yellow. Way more yellow than I'm used to and nice sizes. Not the easiest to keep, non-photosynthetic. You do have to feed it. What really stands out from the order, Jay? Before I go ahead and wrap this up. Oh, a couple more I found here, hello. Pavias, Pekin Enchiladas, Power Bankies, Ex-Wife Corals. Yeah, this guy's sweet. We could do this all day. But you know what's better than doing this? You guys coming to the store. Ah, a lot of you don't live in Canada. It sucks. I wish we could ship to you. We cannot. Once it is here, it is not leaving here. Oh, that's really nice too. Why? Um, it's difficult. It's expensive. And everything we have here in the store will sell here in the store so it's really just not practical for us to try and get it um, overseas again we have we have enough demand here in the country um, just to meet our customers demands here people who live in Canada so sorry to burst your bubble but uh, you guys can find a lot of this stuff in the States it's down there oh I think it's the pricing it's very expensive we're a lot less uh, expensive than some of the US retailers I think that's it we'll wrap it up if you guys got any questions, if you saw something in the video that you liked, feel free to screenshot it and shoot us an email. It does take time to get all this prepared. We go through it, we frag it, we photograph it. It takes, uh, it's going to take some time, almost two weeks. And we have another order coming. Where we're going to put it, I'm not sure. I was hoping here it's like 200 and something colonies of just acro. So I have to get really, really creative with space, maybe move some stuff downstairs. We will see you guys back here soon. Thank you for watching this episode. Give us one of these. Don't forget to subscribe and all that fun stuff. Have a nice day.